It's Adaptive Goddess, and today we will be finishing up the DBT skills for emotional regulation with the skill Opposite Action. So Opposite Action is when is the skill you use when the emotion sparks an urge that we act upon and sometimes we act upon very harmful urges. And so opposite action is doing the opposite of the urge. And so there is a seven step process to actually doing opposite action. One, you figure out the emotion. Two, you figure out what your urge is. Three, you check the facts. So if the situation uh, requires that emotional response, you're good. But if the emotional response doesn't quite fit the situation, then maybe think about opposite action. So then the fourth step is you think about like, do you want to change your emotional reaction? Do you want to change your emotion? The answer is yes. Then you figure out your opposite action in step five. Six is you do the opposite action all the way. And seven is that you actually repeat the opposite action until the emotion has decreased enough for you to notice or to handle on your own. So we will be going through some uh, urges with some of the emotions and what the opposite action actually is. So first up would be fear and that is when there isn't actually something to be scared of. Um, I know my body would go into a, flight or uh, a fight or flight response without there actually being a situation where that's needed. So the urge is to typically escape or avoid. The opposite action is to approach, confront, so face your fear over and over and over and over again until you are in the mindset that you can actually take some deep breaths and do it. Again, this isn't for things that actually require a fight or flight response or things that like biologically humans should be scared of like sharks or heights or snakes, things that like historically could have killed us. Next up is anger. And this is again where the emotional response and urge may be more intense than the situation. And the urge is to attack. The opposite reaction would be to gently avoid, take a break, be kind, or use caring gestures. Next up would be sadness, not grief. We all express grief differently and don't let anyone tell you how you need to express grief. But for things that where the emotional response shouldn't really be sadness or it doesn't make sense for it to be sadness, um, this is a great skill to use. So we often want to feel withdrawn and isolated. What you can do instead for the opposite action is get active and increase your pleasant activities. So we are going to move on to shame. And shame is the kind of societal pressures or the external pressures that are forced on you that create the feeling of shame. We tend to avoid or save face by attacking others or we withdraw. And so for shame, you can face the music, forgive yourself, repair, and accept consequences. So next we'll move to guilt and guilt and shame are similar, except guilt is you've done something and is more internal. Shame is more of like your whole self and is more external. So it's external pressures, guilt is internal pressures. And so for guilt, we tend to overpromise, we disclaim responsibility and we beg for forgiveness. Opposite action is the to that, like with shame, is to face the music and repair. For guilt, you ask instead of beg for forgiveness. So for both shame and guilt, if there is a kind of a reason for it and it's not just a 
brain and your emotions playing tricks on you, you can always kind of go public with whatever you did as long as it doesn't violate your own morals. Um, and you also don't apologize if you actually have not done anything wrong so that it doesn't like fit the facts. So if someone's blaming you for having a video game mess up and that's not your fault, you don't need to apologize that guilt and shame would be using opposite action, but more of like maybe take a break from the person, increase your other pleasant activities. So just make sure that your feelings are in line with the situation before you do opposite action, um, especially for guilt and shame, because you may be apologizing for something you don't need to apologize for. And you never ever need to apologize for being yourself, whether that is stimming, whether that is being restrictively interested in something. I have mine, I talk for hours on them. You don't need to apologize for it. Next up is jealousy. And jealousy, we tend to make accusations, we um, attempt to control, and we act really suspiciously. So like going through people's phones and stuff like that. So the opposite action would be to stop spying and snooping and to find relaxing activities. Unless there is cause for, like unless the situation makes it so that maybe you do need to be a little bit more on guard, whether your um, partner or your significant other is like cheating on you. That's when not necessarily spying and snooping, but being a little bit more suspicious um, of the other person is actually warranted. Last up is love. And I know love is a very complicated emotion, but this only use uh, opposite action only when the love is unwanted, the relationship is truly over, or it's abusive. So if someone says like, oh, I, I only see you as a friend, you saying things like I love you or things like that really isn't wanted and actually can destroy your relationship. So urges for feeling love is saying I love you, spending time with a person, giving affection, and doing what the other person wants. The opposite action when love is either unwanted, the relationship is over, or the relationship is abusive is to avoid the person, find distractions, find the cons of being in a relationship with that person, especially if it's abusive, um, and avoid contact with reminders of the person. So like, don't play your favorite song with the person. Don't go to hangouts that you typically go to until that emotion has subsided. You can then go back. So opposite action is best done when the emotion doesn't fit the facts. So that's for any and all emotions. If you are happy in a situation that you don't really like it's not appropriate to be happy in then doing an opposite action of happy is definitely a good thing to do next is if the emotional intensity doesn't fit the situation so if you are yelling at someone and you are kind of belittling them and you are having an out of control moment when someone did something really minor that that's an emotional intensity that is not warranted. So uh, opposite action is best done when it's done all the way. And what I mean by that is that you fully commit to the action. So your behavior changes, your body language changes, whether that's your facial expression, your posture, your tone of voice, all of that changes, and especially your words and your thoughts. So you actually are going to change what you're thinking and that all comes into play with check the facts and those thinking traps. So comment down below, which one of these do you think is going to be the hardest for you to do opposite action of? For me, it will probably be something like happy or um, like excited. I get really, really excited. And when I get really excited, that just goes up and up and up and up and up. Um, 
yeah, <laughs> my emotional intensity doesn't always fit the situation for excited, but it's always then hard to come back down. So yeah, which one do you think is going to be the hardest for you to do? Or do you have an opposite action for any of these emotions that maybe I didn't think of? So yeah, that is it for the video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and gently tap that like button. And remember to be kind, compassionate, and true to you.